Hi and welcome to this video about how to stop your dog pulling on the lead. Now let's get this out of the way to start with. This is not a quick fix video. I don't believe in a quick fix for something like this. This is gonna take some patience and lots of work, but we can do it. Let's get into it. So firstly, let's consider why our dogs pull on the lead to start with. It's not about dominance, it's not about them needing to be in front to prove they're the pack leader. Simply, they have twice as many legs as you, they naturally move faster than you do, and the world is exciting. They want to get there quicker. So for most dogs, to walk at our pace is unnatural, and we're asking them to do a pretty unnatural thing. But we can do it with the right methods. Firstly, there's a few things I'd like you to consider before your loose lead walking training. There is no point trying to teach our dogs to walk with a nice loose lead in a distracting environment. Don't take them on a walk to teach them how to walk. We want to do it in the least distracting environment possible, like most of our training really. Start indoors or if your garden's not very distracting, do it there. Now I'm going to be reinforcing the behaviours I like in these exercises and I'm going to be reinforcing it with food. You can do that with toys, but I'm going to use food to start with because I can get a lot more repetitions much more quickly than I can with toys to start with. And at the very beginning I'm going to start using a really salient, a really interesting high value piece of food like cheese or meat to start with. Also get something nice and convenient to get your treats from, a loose pocket or a treat bag like this. So there are lots of pieces of equipment out there which will claim to stop your dog pulling on the lead. Now for me and these exercises, we're going to use equipment as management and we're going to train them not to pull on the lead, not really using the equipment to do that. So you're going to need just an ordinary flat collar, an ordinary lead, not too long, not too short. I'd recommend not an extendable lead. Remember here, we are training our dogs to walk with a loose lead. Sometimes an extendable lead, no matter what length you have it, there's always tension in that lead. It's never slack. If you insist on using that extendable lead, lock it off at a, at a certain length. Not too long though. Now the last thing I'd like you to get your dog is a nice comfortably fitting harness. Now with this, we're going to teach our dogs that there are two types of walking. There is leisure walking, where you're going to put them on their harness and they can pull you a little bit. They can go and sniff over there. It's really good for them. They can be a dog essentially. And then there's training walk. We're gonna unclip from the harness and clip onto the collar. This is gonna be a clear signal to our dogs that when on the collar, we're gonna be training our loose lead walking. And when we clip on the harness, go be a dog. Now the harnesses I use are perfect fit harnesses with two points of contact and a double ended lead. Now at this point, I think it would be really helpful if you haven't seen it already, look at my video on how to teach your dog eye contact. Now if you haven't seen it, we're just rewarding our dogs for looking us in the eye and then they get a treat. Okay, so exercise one. Your dog is stood or sat in front of you. The lead is on the collar and I'd just like you to take a couple of steps backwards. If they start following you, I want you to say good and give them a treat. Do this a couple of times and then move on to exercise two. Here, the dog is beside you and you're gonna start taking a side step. If your dog follows you and the lead is loose, say good, give them a treat. What's happening here? We're making the association with, oh, moving with my human with a loose lead equals good stuff. So what we're gonna do now is move on to exercise three and this is called drunk dog walking and you're gonna see why. So I want you to start off again, start moving with your dog, oh, Moving with the human with a loose lead equals good stuff, but then you're gonna change direction. You're gonna move sideways, move in a diagonal, walk in a circle, try and keep your dog a little off guard which, which way you're going to go. If the lead is loose, I want you to quite frequently at this point, give them those treats, drop them to your feet, feed them from your hand, whatever. If at any time the lead goes tight, you're just gonna stop. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing bad is going to happen. We're certainly not gonna yank the neck. We're certainly got, not gonna add anything that might scare the dog. We're just gonna wait. Nothing good's gonna happen when the lead is tight. If they stay there, we can lure them back, or if they come back to us, yeah, give them a treat, reward that, and off we go again. 
Now, we're not going to add a cue for this behavior. We're not going to say the word heal and expect them to come back to us. Having walking with the human with a loose lead is the cue. We want to avoid the trap of waiting till the lead goes tight, shouting heal at our dogs, and then yanking them back. I see this very often, but what you're doing, you're associating the word heal with a tight lead. It's the opposite to what we want. If this is going really well, you're doing your drunk walking in your low distraction environments, and you are being very generous with those treats to start with, let's start reducing those treats. Eventually, your dog gonna look up at you, just like the eye contact exercise, and you're gonna go, good, and give them a treat. If the dog is looking up at you, they can't pull on the lead. It's an incompatible behavior. Now exercise four, let's set up a bit of a circuit. You can go from point A to point B. Here I'm setting up my poles with A, B, C, three points there, and we're just gonna walk forward, walking with our dogs, rewarding when the lead is loose, and walking with the human. Now at this point, I don't want you to be stopping to giving your dog a reward. I want you to be moving while rewarding. Remember, it's moving with the human. And oh, look at my mistake here. Kira jumped up to get the treat. I don't want to be accidentally rewarding jumping up for this. So if your dog is snatching or trying to get the treat, keep those treats out of sight until you've used your marker word. You're good. If this is going really well, I'd like you to start varying your speed, start slowing down or speeding up and start varying when you're gonna give those treats. Are you gonna give it every time they look at you or every third time they look at you, every five steps, every 10 steps, every two steps? Keep them guessing, keep this fun. So now we're gonna increase our distractions and we're gonna use the, our environment to do that. So if our dogs are happily, loosely walking around the house and doing that really well, going into the garden then. If they're doing that into the garden really well, maybe out the garden gate just for a couple of steps and back in again, or out the front door, depending on your, on your setup. But just remember to keep these training sessions nice and short. Make it two to five minutes maximum a few times a day. Keep it short and keep it fun. So hopefully this is going well and you're doing your loose lead walking training separately to your leisure walking, your ordinary exercising with your dog on the harness. Now we're gonna combine the two together. We're gonna to loosely walk on your regular walk. So to start with, I would just like you to go on a leisure walk with your dog, clip on the harness, go be a dog, you can go sniff. Halfway through your walk, get your treats ready, we're gonna do a little bit of loosely walking training. And we're gonna tell our dogs this by unclipping the harness and clipping them on the collar. Hey, guess what, mate? We did a little bit of loosely walking training. Two minutes, dropping those treats. It's gonna be high distractions, you may have to increase those treats. and then unclip, back on the harness, off you go, be a dog. So gradually over the next few days, you're gonna increase that training time from two minutes to three minutes to five minutes to 10 minutes to who knows, 20 minutes. You can start reducing the frequency of those treats. Remember, if they pull on the lead, stop, wait for them to come back to you, and off we go. Remember, moving with your human with a loose lead gives you the treat. Eventually, the forward motion becomes the reward. Going on the walk becomes the reward. Every step forward will become the reward for walking with my human with a loose lead. Now another way to send the signal that this is a leisure walk and this is a training walk is using the two-point harness. So again, a leisure walk, you can pull, you can be a dog. We're gonna attach the lead to the back of the harness but for a bit of training, we're also gonna use the double-ended lead and that second connection on the front of the harness. Now here, you can see if Rafi pulls on the lead, if the lead goes tight, the front harness clip kind of pulls him in a direction he doesn't wanna go. It stops him going forward. So this is management. This is a little bit of management for those dogs that really do pull quite hard. If they come back to us when they get pulled around, we can reward them for being by our side and off we go again. Remember, this is just a management tool. This isn't the training. The training is the association, walking with my human, with a loose lead, equals good stuff. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.